Okay, I'm going to put that down there. Hello, Alejandro. <laughs> Hi, Megan. How are uh, you? Good. How are you doing? Had a little bit of a technical snafu here. Apologies for uh, being a few minutes late. So apologies to anyone who might be there with uh, it waiting in the continuous line storytelling to meet Alejandro Anaya. And so we can talk about his illustrative process and uh, fountain pens, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. How many pens do you have with you right now? Oh, God. Uh, maybe 10 or 12, but I'm not, I'm not going to talk about all of them. So when you go out on the street, how many do you carry with you? Like when you leave home, how many do you have with you at all times? This is, this is embarrassing. Pr probably 8 to 10. 8 to 10 pens. Well, I don't think that's embarrassing. That just shows that you're like well prepared for anything, right? <laughs> or, or obsessive. One or obsessive. I mean... But this is why we're talking to you, why I chose to talk to you, because in my continuous line storytelling, um, you know, the, the subject of uh, fountain pens and ink and maintenance, it comes up a lot. And, you know, I make up things, I tell them what I think, but I'm like, maybe I should bring in a professional who actually knows, right? Because I don't, I have a lot of fountain pens. I like, I'm a big fan of the Sailor Fude. Yeah. Um, and I have a few others, but I'm not really good at the uh, maintenance of them. Like when it just, it, I hit some trouble, I just buy a new one because they are pretty reasonably priced, right? Yeah. So uh -oh. this is what we're going to do. This is why I brought you in for this first artist chat in the continuous line storytelling. And so Alejandro, you are from Torio. Torreon. Oh, I can't say that Torreon. one. I really cannot say that one. Torreon. Torreon. Um, That's like one of the tougher cities to pronounce, I know, right? I know. And it's hard to, to know where Torreon is. Uh, the, the only reference that I have always is that it's three hours. Everybody looks at me like, Torreon. And then I go, it's three hours away from Monterrey. And they go, oh, 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 yes. So, so it's, it's in the north of Mexico. Yes. Yes, yeah. it is. It's in the it's in, in the state of Coahuila. Coahuila, yeah. And it's a desert-like city. It's a uh, tumbleweeds, right? Yeah, tumbleweeds, uh, roadrunners, and all, all yeah. of that. So tell us, um, you know, so we can get into the pen portion of the program. Tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I mean, I know the art that you're making now is completely dramatic. And it's so, you know, like I said the other day, it's like pandemic art, right? Like it's very, it's like tragically beautiful. And I mean that with all due respect, it's so moving, right? So tell us how you got here, how you got, you know. Let's... Well, uh, it's, it's interesting because all my life, I've been addicted, and I, I really, I, I've been addicted to drawing. I have, it's the first thing that I remember doing was drawing. I sent you a picture yesterday. So yeah, yeah, that. I saw that. <laughs> uh, me at about five or six drawing, and they couldn't drag me away from crayons, pens, uh, pencils. And I, I would get in trouble in, in school because I would always sit at the back of the of the class and just make my own comics, my own characters. Uh, it, it became a big problem, but it was always a big part of who I was. Everybody who knew me in grammar school or in, you know, in middle school will tell you, yeah, yeah, the guy who's always drawing. Yeah. So that, I mean, I have mentioned this, like your art is from your imagination and I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I play with that a little bit, but I'm more like, what's this thing in front of me and let me draw, right? So it's really... So obviously you've been doing that for a long time. So that's why it kind of comes naturally to yes. create these um, characters in your imagination. Then and, and I'm, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because that, that's a big part of my work is I love to create. Of course, you, you go outside, you walk, you see stuff. And for example, I, uh, I was telling a friend, I had a walk in a place in San Miguel that I'd never been a little, you know, a little trail that I'd never been in. Um, and I saw all these beautiful windows and that I'd never seen, you know, colonial windows. And then when I came back home, I drew a character and all the windows were in his head. 
Uh, is that what like our, our uh, cover images, like there looks like it's a scuba guy and there's a lighthouse guy. Is that part of that or no, different characters? Uh, I think that's a different character, okay. but this one was just, uh, it, it, and um, we talked about this. I, I try to take things that I, that I find interesting, like a lighthouse or like a window or like um yeah you infuse some architectural things and things yeah. that you because i know just from knowing you and having done workshops with you in the past you're an avid travel sketcher right yes. so you've always got your journal with you i mean it's sort of that classic travel sketcher i think like when I first met you, it was like, I believe you had a leather bound journal and you've got really fine pens and they've, they're good paper, right? Like, it, like it's right. Like it's just sort of a classic way and you go someplace and you have a fine whiskey while you're taking yes. draw or, or whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, so I see you as sort of like the, the adventure travel sketcher who's like, you know, it, it, taking note of the finer things in life that, that then um, require or ask for finer pens and finer paper, right? It's something that I kind of like struggle with, like, eh, do I want to get myself the nicer paper? The nicer <laughs> pen? Right? That's a pretty common thing, right? So that's what I've always admired. Like you do, you you have nice pens and you have good paper and your your drawings, which I've, I've shared in this group. You know, they're pretty dramatic, right? Thank you. But yeah. it, you know, it's the, the pen process, and we'll get to it. Yeah. It, 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 you get to it because you you become so. Um, um, you you try to find the next. Thing that'll give you a different feeling, a different mm -hmm. feel to how the line puts on paper. And that I think gets you down a rabbit hole where you go through several fountain pens and then you say, well, maybe I should spend a little more on this one. Yeah. Uh, if, if I get that feeling that helps me create something that I, I love. I think, um, you know, because the continuous line drawing is the curriculum I've designed around it is all about sort of pushing people through their fears. And there's, as you know, there's all different levels of fear in making art, right? Like it's, you know, and it's relative. It's not like, you know, we're going to fall off a cliff fear, but that like that fear of like, am I brave enough, bold enough to express myself and, and how, right? And yeah. so um, like continuous line is one way of doing it, but then also the exploration of pens, right? Yeah. And I always tell people because it's not like buying shoes. For me, is it's like, you know, I, I got this pen. It gave me a different feeling and it's going to sound weird or just crazy, but that pen will inspire me because the way it writes or it puts down a line, if it's a wetter pen or if it's a drier pen, uh, something interesting or new will come out of it. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's so, and it's so, the fountain pen world is so vast because people just think, well, it's a thing, you know, with a pointy thing, and then you put the ink in it yeah. and you find out that different inks work different with different pens, different papers. Yeah. Uh, so you have to find that right combination. Or just do a lot of experimenting, right? Yes, yes yeah. absolutely. absolutely. So the thing that we talked about, like it was your, your trip to Europe um, yeah. that really kind of set you off on, on doing that. So why don't you tell us that and then we can jump into the- Absolutely. Pen. Well, yeah. I, I, I it, it, all, it all started when I was in college and somebody made fun of one of my drawings and that just, I, I, I clammed up, I closed, I closed up and I said, you know what? Uh, somebody told me this is, this is childish what you're doing. I was 19 and I just. Yeah, that's right about the age, right? When you got to get serious and go get a real job, stop this artist business, right? Exactly. So I just, you know, put it in a, in a, in a drawer and I just, and Ten years later, I uh, I had I, I had a, I had a, like a burnout, and I went to Europe, 
And it was uh, th those kinds of trips that were, were, I just landed in, in London and I said, okay, from here, I don't know, I'm just going to jump around. Yeah. But I was telling you, I walked into um, a museum in London and it Victoria just- Victoria Albert, right? In the Victoria Albert Museum. And it ah. just peached me in the face. Uh, and I, I, I bought a sandwich and I sat in the courtyard and I started uh, drawing and I, and I thought, I had a revelation. I said, why did I stop doing this? What, why did I ever, ever stop doing this? Yeah. Uh, and that was a wonderful trip because the thing that I was telling you is, is because I started drawing all through that trip, uh, wonderful things started happening. In, in Florence, a man offered to buy uh, my drawing when I was in a coffee shop. And, and that's when it hit me that, you know what? I should... Um I should be doing this and I There's could money in this thing, huh? <laughs> exactly. I could do this. Yeah. And you are doing it, right? You're now um, I know you worked in the corporate and uh, branding for a number of years, but now you're full-time artist. Your your work is in a gallery in San Miguel and elsewhere, right? Yes. Uh I'm working with a few galleries, some of them, two of them back home uh in Torreon. Uh -huh. uh, here I'm working with um, San Miguel, Alejandro San, San Miguel. Miguel, in San Miguel yeah. de Allende. Uh, I'm working with uh, Kerligand Gallery, which is inside Fabrica Aurora. Yeah. And it's been uh, it's been three years, and it's just been wonderful because yeah. you're in the in the major leagues, and it's intimidating at first. Yeah, uh, I've been doing you know expositions in Mexico City, in Roma, in Condesa, you know, in little places. Uh, when you get to San Miguel, you kind of feel like if you're in the majors. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because well, I mean, especially being in La Aurora, where those yeah. are the majors. Yeah, those are the big boys, big boys and big girls, right? There's a lot of women. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And, and people come in from we, the other the other day we had a man from Japan people from Taiwan and and yeah. they go and look at your work and go oh yeah I I, I really like this yeah uh, so it's 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 been an interesting it's been an interesting ride up to this to this point yeah I and when we met in San Miguel you weren't at that place just like I wasn't at the yeah. place I'm at right now and so it's been really great to watch because honestly just knowing your art the way I have been watching it it I mean the pandemic was no good timing for anyone right like it was horrible in so many different ways but I think for a lot of artists it was a time of like if an artist was serious it was the time for serious exploration right and That's I it. saw your art level up and it just got more dramatic and more like powerful right so and and also like with I mean your lines are amazing and I guess I never even realized until we were talking yesterday you actually do do continuous lines so let's get yeah. into some pen action here yes yes of course um, okay, so we were talking about, uh, the first thing I want to say is, first reaction to most people, um, to fountain pens is like, no, 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 that's, that's well, too complicated. Yeah, too much yeah. money. <laughs> too much money, they're too expensive, they're too iffy, they're too hard to maintain, uh, they're too, you know, scratchy, uh, and those are all valid points, but I want to, I want to, set the record straight or, or tell people that's one way or that's one bad experience you could have with fountain pens. And let's talk about the other one. Let's talk about the good one. Yeah. So I want to talk about affordable pens. First yeah. of all, uh, you and I talked this about this. Uh, the, the, the great thing about the fountain pen industry is that the major brands at least the major brands, the major series of brands that I like, which uh -huh. are the Japanese pens, um, Pilot, the three giants that the, the nerds, the fountain pen nerds, we call them. The three giants yeah. of pen are Pilot, Pilot Sa Sailor, Sa and Platinum. Platinum. Exactly. Those, Those three are the three big boys as far as like sort of the go-to fountain pens, right? I mean, because I use the, the Sailor. Yeah. And here's the platinum. And what was the other one? Pilot. Pilot. Yeah, I don't think I have any pilots, but you're going to show us what you got here, right? Yes, I do. 
Now, the, the first one is the easiest to get, which is the, and pardon me if I butcher the name because some people call it Kakuno and some people call it Kakun. This yeah, is, I thought it was Kakuna, like Hakuna Matata. Kuna Matata, yes, exactly. <laughs> so the pilot Kakuno is, is um, it's like $10, $12 pen. And where do you get it? You can get it in Amazon. You can get it on eBay. You can get it on, uh, what's the other one? Etsy. You can get it on. Wow, it's, Etsy. It's one of the easiest pens to get. Uh, even some, some, uh, um, some um, oh God, office supplies places usually offer it. So, yeah. Were you able to get that in San Miguel or did you get that online? I mean, that's easy. I'm sure everyone has access to the Amazon. El Pato, El Pato oh. has, has two pilot, two, two types of pilot pens, which is the, the Kakuno, which is the, the cheapest one. Uh -huh. And the Metropolitan, which is the, 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 the next level up. But, but, and this is the best kept secret, they have pretty much the same nib. So oh, okay. what's the other one? This is the Metropolitan. It's a, it's a metal body. It's also, it's the next level from the Kakuno is the Metropolitan. Oh, okay. And, but they have the same nib. So you can spend $10, you can spend $30. Interesting. Yeah. And so I am going to post this, this information so that under the, this, this posting. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you can write, if anyone's watching and want to write it down, that's fine, but um, it, I will post, I'll share it with the information. Yeah. So that's interesting. So that with the Kakuna is $10 is what, what Kakuna, what? It's just pilot Kakuna. Pilot Kakuno. Kakuno. Yeah. And can you fill that up with ink? Yes. The, the wonderful thing about it, they come in different colors. I like the, the, the see through, but the wonderful that's thing. That's the same one with a green cap, because that's the one I have. That's exactly the same it's one. the same one. Oh, okay. Interesting. They All come right. in different kind of colors, but the, the wonderful thing about Pilot is usually, of course, they have proprietary um, cartridges. cartridges, which yeah only fit pilot but also they're also very easy to get but you ah, can okay. get a, a converter yeah and the converters, it's, it's gonna it's gonna cost about the same price as the pen but you can you get to choose your your ink it's a little like thing that you i that, mean is that just the standard cartridge the refill pilot. Oh, oh, for pilot, for pilot. So you got to make sure you get the right brand with exactly. that one. This is All a right. Con 7, no, a Con 50. It's called because they have several. And it's just, it's the more standard pilot uh, um, converter. So you can put it in into a, a Kakuno and it works like any fancy fountain pen. You can You can draw any ink you want with this. Beautiful. That's really good to know. Here in Mexico City, I have Lumen, and I know that they have Kakuna. Yes. Kakun. I want to keep saying Kakuna. Kakuna. Um, but Kakuna. I like to change the name of them all. Fude, yeah. Sharpe. I, I'm not gonna. I, I don't want to rain on the the uh, on the Lumen boys because they they have the most fountain pens that you can go and buy physically. But if you want this pen a little cheaper, you can get it in Amazon. You'll probably save maybe a hundred pesos. It'll be at two hundred pesos in, okay. in Amazon. Yeah, um, you no, know, my Lumen does have a large number of pens that I, I've never even heard of, right? And some of them are quite costly, right? So I don't even mess with them. So this is good to know that the Kakuna has some options. Kakun, Pilot Kakun has Kakun some options. Kakun. I guess I'm never going to say that right, huh? Um, okay. okay, but just but just before we move on to the next one, yeah, you are like I was several years ago and don't want to commit to anything. You can say, okay, I want to give the fountain pen world a try. You can walk into an Office Depot and buy a Pilot Varsity. Pilot Varsity. This is because we were discussing yesterday. Some people go, well, no, no, no. I like my roller balls. I buy twelve roller balls. And I'll just use them. Hello, uniballers. <laughs> uniballers. There is a disposable fountain pen, and it writes beautifully, and it's called a Pilot Varsity. 
Interesting. And how much would you say that is Maslomenus? Oh God, maybe uh, less than a hundred pesos, maybe. Oh, maybe wow. <laughs> That's it's, good it's, to know. So you can give this a try and say, you know what? I like this, the feeling of this. I can go ahead and move to the next level in my fountain pens. Yeah. And and that's that's good where you're not like, like, uh, just for example, when I first bought my first fancy pen, it was a Lamy. And it, I remember exactly it was $52. And I wasn't really in a position to be buying $52 pens. <laughs> and I felt like this is going to change my life. And honestly, I'm still angry at that pen because it was just not very good. <laughs> I mean, I still have it at the bottom of the barrel over there because it's $52. I didn't want to throw it away, but it did not work very good, right? And so I was resentful at the money that I paid for it, and it wasn't that good. So it's good to know that there are some cheaper options to try out because honestly, when you start playing around and working with nibs, it's it's you, you want to keep going, right? Where's my camera? Because they're fun, right? And you get such interesting, like uh, with these, this one, I feel like it's just like with the wrist, the spin of the wrist, you can get so many creative strokes. And especially when you're doing continuous line, it, it's nice to know how to get some variation, right? So fell yes. on the wrist and fell on the nib. <laughs> Very nice. Some lovely wrist um, uh, line variation. If, if you rotate it and- Right. So it's like a dance, right? Like you have to learn how to dance with your fountain pen. Right. I mean, and it is really a dance. But I also want to go back to the if you have a bad experience with a certain pen, it's it's important to take into consideration that the ink might not be it might have been the right one for that pen, that the paper might have been, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, at that time, I was definitely at a place where I, I didn't feel like I deserved quality. Um, tools, right? So I bought this pen thinking, oh, my life is going to be better now. But I didn't sort of rally everything else with it, right? Like I, I bought this pen, I felt like it dried up quickly, it, it was hard to push on the paper, I was expecting it to be like, butter, right? <laughs> and it was not like butter and so then I did get a little angry at it and that I mean I'm not losing sleep over it because I'm quite happy with these but I also know that I'm there's more I need to know which is why we're here yes. today yes. for example you have there's a lot of food aid pans out there uh, but I think unquestionably in the low cost um how many so, pens do they have do they make a lot like food, dozens? Oh God, yeah hong dian makes food aid pens uh there's very high cost yeah uh, some uh i think sailor makes some high cost uh food aid is pens sailor and food aid is that we're talking two different groups here no 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 food aid, food is just you know the 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 this bed nib thing oh. and it's, it's that food aid is the the type of nib that that's if you can see there it's a little bent upwards put it on your against your forehead i mean like on the not against your forehead really. just so we have something to see it right like so you can see it yeah there we go there we go now stick it in your eye no, i'm just kidding <laughs> so th there's and i'll give you an example uh yeah, yeah. sailor this the, the only thing i have against this Sailor, because it's it's a beautiful writer, a beautiful, you know, uh, and tool, tool. Uh, is that Sailor makes a smaller one. Oh, I have that one, too. I feel like that's my travel one. And it has a different personality, too. What? Yes. So what, what is your beef with this? Uh, no, that uh, there's no, the, my beef is with this one, which is way too long. Oh. I like, I like the, you know, the portability of yeah. just, you have the same bent nib let me put it against my forehead yeah there we go um, not your eyebrow because we can't see it there, <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you have yeah. the same bent nib but it's 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 a regular pen you it's, know the other one it's 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 much smaller and you get the same strokes yeah yeah and it's the same it's the same brand I mean that is the one that goes in my 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 bag that when I go out sketching. So yeah, that I do, and I feel like it's got a little bit. Maybe it's just the way I use them too. I feel like they they get different personalities. Is that true? Like yeah. as you work with the pen, like maybe you're bending it a little bit more, and you sort of bend it to your will, right? Maybe that's 
in the fountain pen world, we talk about writing experience. And every pen has a different writing experience for everybody. That's why you need to experiment because I might say, oh my God, this is the best pen. And then I lend it to you and you go, no, not really. Uh, uh, yeah, interesting. You'll go, you're going to go, you know what? This worked out much better for me. Uh, interesting. So everybody has to find, it's very personal. It's, the fountain pens are very personal. I think personal. that's a, a super important uh, tidbit here, right? It's super personal, right? Because Absolutely. I mean, I guess it just feels like, why would it be personal? But now I, now that I have several of these and, oh, I want to use this one for that thing over there because it has a different, I don't even really know how to describe it, but they have different personalities. So very interesting. I'm not just making these things up. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and that's why when uh, I'm going to talk about the third affordable fountain pen before we go into it. Okay. Uh, so wait, is, to recap, we have the, 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 Sailor. Sailor. Boudet right. nib. So that's the first economical fountain pen that yeah. you have. Or, or you can go into this one. They're okay. a little, this one's a little bit pricier because it's a little nicer pen, maybe $25. Oh. Okay. Um, and you can you can go into the Gakunos, which are yeah. 20 or 12 13 dollars. So it's the uh Fude and the Sailor and then the Kakuno. And then the pilot, you know, yeah. And then go ahead. And then this is the platinum preppy. I and, yeah, this one is brand new to me. So tell me, tell me, tell me. This is the, one of one of the specialities of preppy, uh, of preppy of platinum, is that these are the guys who are known for the best seal caps. Yes. Seal well, caps. not in that case exactly, because that that's 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 a, that's a an odd thing they have and it's a beautiful pen and it's it's okay. writes beautifully yeah. but usually what they have is a in all of their brands even in their higher end brands like this they they have a patented seal cap and are you to, is that this is that what this is is that a seal cap it's 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 inside if you can see here so for oh. them to dry out it's very hard for this to dry oh, out. I get it. So the cap is helping you preserve uh, yes. the pen. It's it's of all the Japanese pens, the one that's that will be the 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 least likely to you know to have a, a hard start. We call it. You know, you left it there for a week and then you start writing with it. These are the ones that are less likely. To, to have a, a hard start because of the patented um, seal cap. Yeah. And, and they have, they're, these are and ridiculously cheap. These are like $9. Where, and where'd you get it? Uh, you can also get it in, in um, Amazon, Mercado Libre. Uh, you can buy them by the pack. And, and, and here, here's the a quick. Platinum tip. Preppy. Is that yeah. what you called it? Okay. Platinum preppy. Okay. Oh, I feel like you were just going to give me an inside tip and I interrupted. What is that? Yes. See, okay. platinum has three low cost pens. Uh, and this is the lowest cost. And then they go up to the to another one who which is the prefontaine, which is like two dollars more. And then they have the placier. And the placier is an aluminum pen that's, I love it. I, it's a lovely pen. They have many colors, but. What? <laughs> inside of the placier. What? Is really the same as the preppy. Wait, say that again now. The inside of this one, which is, what is this one called? This is the placier. And so is this cheaper or more expensive than no, the More expensive. This is like maybe 18 to $20. But, you know, if you have a problem with it, if it clogs up, you can always buy a preppy. Oh. Because this, this is just the body. That's this, so that's different. The inside, the innards are the same. As the preppy. And the preppy is that's like 10, 10 bucks. Is that what you said? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So Eight you can bucks. buy a preppy and just change this. Oh. Put it into your placier 
and ta-da. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So that's, are, are those, that's a, they're all, those are Japanese pens too, right? These are all Japanese. I Well, yeah, I guess you said platinum and this is from the same family, but I didn't know that there was more than this one. So that's, this is news to me. This is part of the, I mean, I know the whole fountain pen world is huge and I, I have my three that I like, and but this is I need to know more about these. What are these? Beautiful. There's a, every single one a brand has a wide range. These are all platinums, for example. These are two platinums. This is a three seven seven six, and this is a um, Procyon. So you're gonna you're gonna find that each pilot, platinum and sailor have a, a huge range of really cheap to ridiculously expensive pens. What's the most you ever spent on a pen? Uh, my wife is here, so I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, pen language. It's uh, the most that I spent on a on a, on a pen was, uh, I think, uh, a little under four hundred dollars. Yeah, that's a that's a purchase, isn't it? <laughs> uh, oh yeah. And, and, and it, you're expecting that thing to just. You know, I know I paid $52 and I thought my life was going to be, you know, infinitely better. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Um, and, 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 but was it, I mean, at that point, I, price point, I would think it's got to be a pretty good pen. It, it is. It? it is, but I'll tell you something. If you buy a nice pilot pen, and I'm talking uh, like the one, like this one, like the Metropolitan. For how much? It, it's for 600, 700 pesos, which is like $30. 30 bucks, yeah. 30 bucks, and you compare the writing experience with this $10 Kuno, uh -huh. what you say? It's just this one is a little fancier, uh, but the nibs are the same. Yeah. So I guess when you have a pen that is, you know, because the, obviously that is more than just like a uniball or just something kind of basic, right? Um are you giving a lot of consideration to the paper? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because that is part, and I'm glad you mentioned that, that is part of a bad experience. It happened to me when I was I used to buy the Lamis. Yeah. The Lamis are German, so they, they tend to be a little juicier, a little wetter. And they tend they, to be? Is that what you said? They tend to be? They tend to be. They tend to be a little wetter. <laughs> and... Depending on the ink. Yeah, if you, yeah. If That's you right. use Lamy ink, which I had here. <laughs> um, yeah. If you use Lamy ink, which is very liquid, uh, and you use, for example, normal, uh, what do you call, copy paper, it's going to be, it's, you're going to have a very thick line. Well, I mean, you shouldn't be using copy paper. With. But that that's a lot of people will go, oh, this is an extra fine. And then they'll use very liquid ink on a copy paper and they go, what? This is this is not a fine line. But it's not it's not the fountain pen or it's not even it's the paper and it's the ink. So what I recommend is um, try to get some good paper, not I mean ridiculously fancy paper. But are you talking like I mean, a hundred percent cotton? Are you talking fifty percent cotton? What are you What are you talking about here? I'll give you an example. These are I'm sorry about the stains, but this is the, the this is a, a brand with a little rabbit. I I can't I can't remember what. Oh, that's the, Indar. That's the, the Italian guys yes. that do this right there. Look at that. I didn't know that they had. Um, they have and and their their uh, mixed media. Uh, sketchbooks are very affordable. So, for example, you can see buy them at Lumen. I never, I think, I think I'll have to take a look. So, what is the paper on that? This is this is really nice paper for fountain pen. Uh, for I'm trying to show you something here. Uh, for if you if you use the ink from fountain pen, or for example, if you just want this, well, this was a um. This was a. Uh, 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 <laughs> we want to see. I want to see the lines. Bring that right up to the camera so I can see the lines. Hold on, I, I got something better here. Okay. 
<laughs> I want to show you something that's much, much better. And it goes with your, for example, this was done with a uh, calligraphy pen. Yeah, look at that. So you can you can go a little nuts and you can you can let me show you the one that I was looking but for. But I do want to see that one that you held up too, because I believe it was continuous line. I mean, I, I see what you're doing with your content. Well, the lines on your characters have such amazing lines, right? So we would like to see some of them if we could please. And yeah, it looks like you're flipping through your sketchbook too. Yeah. Why is I, it so hard? You have millions of them. Why are you looking for the most perfect one? Yes. Yes, I, I because I had, for example, this is the best example of continuous line. And you're talking about this gentleman here, huh? Uh, so move it to your left a little bit more so we, he's in the center. Yeah, and then a little higher and a little closer. Bring him in a little bit. So look at that. So you're doing all your values with the scribble. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Um, and this is this is this is to your to your point. All the background is fountain pen ink. I just put it in, and then I put water, and I distribute it as as, uh, as much as I want. Well, okay. So, uh, what kind of ink is that? Is that the sepia? It. Uh, I had. I want to show you a couple of inks here before we okay. get. Into the drawing sections. For example, the, there's a gazillion trillion. Brand. Wait, so is this jumping ahead? Because I, now I forget, what were we talking about? Why did you just show me that? Show us that. <laughs> I can forget uh, what we were talking about. I, I showed you that because of the paper and the ink. Paper and ink. So yeah, that, that to me seems like middle of the road paper, right? Like it's not the best, but it's not the yeah. worst either, right? Same with so, this, for example. This is all black, black ink, putting a little water on it, it, this is not permanent ink, which is the case that I want to make, because I've talked to several of you guys, and, and you're like, we want our permanent ink. Well, I mean, I kind of come from a background of urban sketching, which means that you're out balancing everything on your knee, muscle manus, right? So yep. you kind of want things to dry so you can move on and go have lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But so, but in the continuous line storytelling, it's not just urban sketching. It's really just the practice of drawing in continuous line, right? And so while yes, I do, I use the Japanese carbon ink, right? And I know a number of people in the group do. And, and just, I know a lot of urban sketchers do too. But what you're advocating for is like use some of the inks that aren't, waterproof so that you can they're not permanent so you can so you can mess with them a little bit yeah and and you can you can do a combination i'm saying go out and explore you have all these brands diamine uh Montevero. Oh, wait, wait, hang on so let me ask you let's start from the beginning when it comes to inks here it, is there one that is kind of like it's your go-to ink that's kind of in a lot of your pens. And then you have the pens that have different inks and stuff like that. Is, do you have a, like a main ink or no? I, I tend to rotate uh -huh. on, on, because for example, uh, brown, and when I say brown is more gold inks, give me a very interesting, for example, brown line. But uh -huh. when I put water on them, they turn yellowish or sepia. So they get that aged look. And it, it's lovely, but then um, I will go into a purple or a blue fountain pen or a oh blue. Oh my God, pen. are you serious? And, yes, <laughs> and I will show you in just a moment. All right, uh, yes, I know we have kind of, I'm sort of jumping ahead here, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, but <laughs> but the thing is, Always consider that fountain pens is not, if you try one fountain pen with one ink, one paper, that's not the whole fountain experience. It's just one slice. It's, of just one. it's like if you drive one car in one bumpy road on a hot day, you know, it's, and then you go and drive a Ferrari on a highway with no speed limit. You're going to have two different yeah, driving yeah. experiences. 
Interesting. So, I mean, interesting to think of a pen experience like that, right? Like it can be so vast. And I mean, me personally, I, you know, I draw, I like fountain pens, but I've never really delved deep into it like this. So this is really interesting food for thought, right? And, and with a way to sort of start small. So it's not like that Lammy purchase where it's just these little ones. And then we'll get into inks too, because I love that idea of just having some specific inks not just like you can't I can't just put my <clears throat> end art into my pens right or whatever yes yes yes, yes. that's that's a big no-no big no-no so you gotta make sure you have the right ink for fountain pens exactly yeah. and and find something that you know I found these some of the these are just like a few of the gazillion ones I've got here but I wanted to show you because some of them really speak to me. And sometimes I combine them uh, and I'm, I'm going to show them to you in other colors, in other pens, I'm sorry, because that's in the pens that I had these colors. Yeah. Um, so let me, let, me, let me see if I can get it going here. Are you doing your little drawing now? Uh, I, I'm trying to get the the um, my phone to work. Let's see. Okay. We didn't have much of a tech check today because my whole system went down here, but I think it'll be okay. Okay. Yeah, so, there we go. Okay, let please let me know if if you can see. It's coming in. It's coming in. Yeah, I think it would be nice to see you um, in action with some of these, uh, your pens and your inks. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait, well, you got to flip that around because <laughs> we're looking right up your nose in this one. Yes. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm sorry you got to see everything that's up here. <laughs> so, All uh, right. I don't so, know yeah, how how, let me let me do a zoom in. Yeah, zoom uh, in. How do I zoom into that? You have to physically move it down. Oh, I have to physically move it. Uh, or you can just. Um, how do I switch it to? Okay, I did this. A while ago, and I don't know how to wait a minute. Well, you... it, there's not, there's limited zoom abilities with the iPhone and Zoom. So, um, if you can center that in the page a little bit more, a little bit better, bring that into oh, there's your what is that, a tripod or something? Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, I see. Okay. You know what it, it would almost be better if you had something like this and then you put your phone there and then it can just watch, you know, like have it be on an angle so you can watch your hand. You know what I'm saying? Like bring it down a little bit closer and just lean it on um like if you, you know have... what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a few things here. <laughs> there will there's, well, there's a way, right? So um there's a way. There's a way. I'm gonna look at the comments and see if uh, there's any questions here. Um, okay, I think we got a little closer. <laughs> I'm just gonna to try to center it a little more. Elaine Bowie says, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we've got somebody here. Here's Cindy, Are, I'm saying your name wrong, who's from Piedras Negras in Coahuila. Cindy Arellano. Hello, Coahuila. Yeah, is that how you say that? Uh, well, uh, Janice LH holds less sync. Oh, I don't know what she's talking to. Do they have converters? Um, I think with, this was a question Elaine asked. I think as you were talking about these things, you told us if they had converters. What Whatever pen you've been talking about, you told us if they have yeah. uh, converters. Yeah. Some of them come with converters. Some of them, uh, you have to buy the converter. For example, a, a, a less expensive pen like the Kakuno doesn't come with a converter. So you have to invest in a converter, which will cost you pretty much what the pen costs you. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's totally worth it because you can put any ink you want in, in it. Van, I uh, 
I have said that I'm going to be posting all the names of these pens because we don't expect you all to be writing it down. So um, fret not, there will be a follow-up list of the names of pens. So um, yeah. Okay. So, oh, well, there it is. Okay, this is as close as I could get. I mean, honestly, um, Alejandro, if you have something down on table level, because that I think, oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. And then just if you can center your paper a little bit. Let me just tighten this up. <clears throat> okay. How about that? Yeah, that's better, right? And okay. actually, let's see um, if I can make that big. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Uh, la, la, la. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, okay. There. Okay. So now you can tell us. Um, and this is a much hated Lamy pen because I know it's a polarizing pen. And I, I chose a um, I chose a, a a brownish yellowish ink for this, and I just I, I'm just going to do a very very loose character here. Um, I don't know if if this comes across, and I'm just gonna not gonna focus on how well he is proportioned. I just want to get a guy here. You know, notice that I keep going. This is the continuous line that I I'm also a big fan of. You know, and maybe give the guy some hair. But you see that's 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 a brown sepia kind of ink. I'm gonna go in with a little water. Alejandro, just because I couldn't pin you effectively, it was just staying focused on you. At this point, when you're about to add some water, can you hold that up and bring it a little bit closer to the camera? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. There we go. Okay. So we start putting in, using the ink we were using, because it's not, uh, permanent ink, it starts taking another shade and we start giving it some volume. As and we so this was like within about a minute of you laying it down, but has it dried at all or no, you can continue to hit it with some water. Oh, I can continue to hit it with some water because you're going to find different kinds of inks. Some are very dry. I love the ones that are for this purpose. I love the ones that take a little bit of time to dry. And you can you can see. Yeah, bring that up closer to the camera. Yeah, look at that. Look at the values, the volume that you're getting. Now. And you me, still layer from here, right? Like this is just getting yes, started basically. Yeah. For example, if I go with a uh, well, let me find it. If I go with a blue, uh, a blue here, I might, might put up a few blue black things around. Well, if you're able to, can you bring it a little bit closer? Just, I'm sorry, with the three cameras, it's hard to, it won't let me pin that one. Yeah. So if I put a little blue here. And That's keep, like a navy blue ink, huh? Exactly. And so I'm just going to, bring in a little bit of blue so I can mix it in and give my character a different feel. It adds a lot of depth, right? And I know you're still layering up from here, but look at that. Isn't that interesting? I mean, he so, looks like he's been like in a, a fight and he's got two black eyes, but he's not done yet, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and see, that's the thing. For example, I have on this Kakuno, I have um, um, Diatramentis ink. So I can go back in here. Great. Can you bring it a little bit closer? Because it sorry, is, sorry. I know, just uh, with I the can go back in here and then redefine 
the features on my character. Look at that, you can just see his eyes coming to life. And this is another way to use your ink. And you can, this I love to do is, is cross hatch. And so a different character starts coming to life. So there's a gazillion ways that you can combine these things and even give the guy a different expression and a different uh, shadow. But you can, like you were saying with the layering, you can go back in as many times as you want. And this is the beauty of fountain pens is you can then you can go a little nuts here and you know if you want some crazy lines to give the the, the character character um, yeah. so this is me working behind the tripod so you you'll excuse um <laughs> it's a little awkward you're trying to work through some uh machinery right. there and I this point, I mean, are you still doing more? Oh, you are? Oh, no, 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 no. I was going to show you something else. See, with other before, ink. Before you do that, just so we can see this, hold it up to like next to, in your camera, your face camera, so we can see it and bring it in close. Bring it in real close to the camera. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look at those beautiful lines and the, the depth just from using some different inks hitting it with some water a little higher, a little higher so we can see his nose. Yeah, and then the continuous line is used in sort of a uh, cross hatching. Yes. But not like like pure cross hatching, right? It's very whimsical, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's like you're, you're really just creating energy on the face by kind of spinning around and, and making some dramatic lines, right? Beautiful. It'll, give them, it'll maybe change the nature of the character. Now, there are inks that are so, 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 so uh, wet that you may want to, you may want to, you know, just use a, a little bit, not too much. So, for example, I'm going to, I want to use very little ink on this character because this is this is an ink that'll if you put some water on it, it'll just go nuts. So, for example, this is a here, Kakuna. I'm, I'm, using, I'm using my Kakuno, uh -huh. and, and you noticed I didn't put I didn't lay that much ink on it because you'll see why. This right. kind. Of Bring him closer so we can see it before you do that, just because it is a little far away. So let us see where he's at right now. You notice okay. that it's, it's a very simple uh, few lines, but you're going to notice that as soon as I put water on it, look at this. Oh my God. What color is that? This is, this is um, Monteverde um purple <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the name in a minute no that's all right it's beautiful right it's it's a magenta it's it's a, it's just gorgeous hey you got another uh, uh friend from Coahuila hello uh, Melissa <laughs> who I just met the other day there's Bill Whittle hello Bill Bill how are you my friend uh, Julie Madden Wald Waldner hello hello Janice Cindy yeah, that's cool. Van, Tasha, Janet, hello. Elaine Bowie, EB, where's Doug? Where's Doug? Yeah, where's Doug? Um, so you, that, I mean, that just looks like he's like being hit with the sunlight, right? I mean, that's yeah. beautiful. Uh, and, and this is just a purple. Let me show you the ink. So you drew a little. Little a few lines with the black, and then with your water brush, you what is that? Can you hold that one up again? The ink that you oh, just had. The ink, this is Monteverde Purple Rain, not like Prince, but Purple Rain, as in as in the Kingdom. Um, and where did you get that from? Is that a local? I got this in Mercado Libre. 
Oh wow. For Amazon. Uh and and it's I don't just... think I've seen that one. That's that's beautiful. But this is specifically yeah. for fountain pens, this ink. All these, all of these are specifically for fountain pens. And you and you can, you know, you can say, well, purple's not my thing, or or um, you know, uh Blue is not my thing, and you can try other like this is another kind of sepia. I'm just gonna make an eye here. Um, and what oh, I Doug is golfing, <laughs> huh? Doug is golfing. Oh, I, love Houston. <laughs> I love the golf. So, <laughs> for example, I take advantage of the good weather when they get it right. <laughs> so this is for example i'm working just on an eye oh my god look how quickly you did that can you bring it closer so we can see oh absolutely i just want to show you something very quickly let me just remember where i put that oh yes i think it's this one it's uh where did i put the oh yeah yeah for example i have one that's a royal blue here so i'm gonna oh, put wait. a little royal it's... blue down here and then i'm gonna Mix them together with water. But bring it closer so we can see that magic happen because it's too far away at this point. Yes, yes ma'am. So <laughs> what I do way. here is I, I start off, listen, look to oh, that, yeah. that turn yellow, which started out brown. But look what happens when I come down here. And it, it, it. Oh, my God. Blue. <laughs> so you have a little bit of dark things down there with the, maybe I didn't put enough blue in it but you see that it, the, all the tones you got from the same ink can you put it in your camera and bring bring it up close because we're not getting good detail on that one a little higher a little higher a little higher look at that right it's important to leave a little bit of white but just kind of moving it around with your water brush right yeah and and if you do this, you can always you say, well, you know what? I lost a lot of detail. Um, which pen was I using for that? <laughs> you, you can say, well, I lost a lot of detail working on that when I put the water in. And yeah. you can go back and say, you know what? I want to go back and give Punch it, it a little bit. And so this is where the continuous line practice really comes in, right? Move it up a little closer. I'm sorry. I just I want to see this happening. Hey, there's Lisa K from Atlanta, Georgia. Hello. <laughs> I can't pronounce her last name, so I just say her city. <laughs> <laughs> and you wow. see, it went back in. Yeah, and you give it some. You, you age it a little bit, right? And you give it some yes. lines and. <laughs> But with yeah. the same ink, it's just that I didn't put any water on it now. So yeah. this is the top layer. You go in, you put lay some ink down, mush it up with a little water. And exactly. then when it's dry, which it dries pretty quickly, then you go in with your lines, right? Exactly. And, and you can, uh, for you guys who love, for example, the food aid names, um, uh, this one I, I'm going to spring on you because I didn't we didn't talk about this one, Megan. Okay. These are the 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 pilot pens that are used for calligraphy. I have one right here, right? This thing. Exactamundo, and I and I put this in in this one. I also put the purple ink, so you can get an idea of how much of a line variation you can get, and how much you can experiment with it. Uh, same purple ink, uh, and you got all these, all these um, lines that go from extremely thick to extremely thin. And I see a lot of illustrators use this. Um, that beautiful. Look at that. And. and and then you can go in with the Wait, water. Hang on, hang on. Let's see that pen because the one I have here in my hand is very thick. Oh, yeah. you That's the thickest. The one under that, before that, is this one. Ah. So you may, you may, you may want to have a range of maybe three. 
Yeah. And, I mean, which which thick which thickness or 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 size works best for you? So so yeah. Okay. Sorry. The same way. Can you bring that closer so we can see it happen? Sorry. Sorry. I know it's probably awkward. You're like yeah, trying yeah. to do it through machinery. So this one dried up a little faster, but um, it 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 also helps to um, go in rather quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I know I kind of distracted you for a moment, but you're still getting an interesting wash with that. Who are all these people you draw? <laughs> these are these are the people who don't let me sleep at night. Uh, they keep me up at night. And I see them on the street and I want to get them, you know, I want this guy to have, you know, a, a, a concerned face. And put it in your camera because that that overhead is not that, see that there's, there's a story behind him a little higher yeah there we go yeah look at that there's totally a story right like an interesting i mean i know your your um characters come from your imagination which i think is just so um you know it's uh, to me i'm just like wow um yeah and they all seem like they're that's why this is like it i mean i is it insulting for me to see it's it's like wonderful pandemic art it's just like it's it's i feel like it's illustrations that make us contemplate life and yeah. it's tragic beauty and the opportunities to see things and think about things because there is a lot of windows and goggles and stuff like that right i mean uh, i showed you this yesterday yeah let's see this and then we'll we have a guy here with a with a gas mask uh but for example, this guy over here with with the um, lighthouse. I I mean, I really feel like your eyes. Uh, uh, yeah, bring this. I know you probably can't see. Whoa! Oh, did you just knock your phone over? <laughs> yeah. Let me let me just. Try Actually, why don't you just kill the, your phone, right? Because it's it's a little hard to see that, and then we just go back to the two. Um, look at the eyes of this guy here. And you know what, Alejandro, I believe you told me that you did this with your food A, right? Yes, I, I when I do big formats, I- Wait, wanna... let's see it. Why are you putting it away? We wanna see it. Oh. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> let's uh, see, I'm gonna take out your phone though, okay? Yes, 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 please. Uh, I'm trying to log out, yes. Okay. I'm gonna it over there, cause it's killing me here. So this, this, uh, People usually think, well, fountain pen is for smaller form formats. But if you had a if you have a food a nib, and if you notice how much you can do continuous line and how you can begin with those lines and then go in with the rest. So with something like this, which is a, a large format, right? Yes. You, you knew what you were doing. I mean, in the sense, like you knew you were going to have these three characters, or was this? Did these kind of come to life as you were drawing? No, no. This, this, I knew I wanted three different crazy characters. Because um, I feel like these are almost reoccurring characters, right? Like I feel like I've seen some of these before. Yeah, this guy, you're going to see a lot of. Uh, yeah. This guy, I used to do a lot of gas masks before the pandemic. Yeah, I, that's why it's pandemic. Hang on, put that back up there because we want to know what kind of paper is that. This is Fabriano paper. Fabriano what? It, and it's usually like 100 pesos for this size. But is of, that 100% cotton or is that 50? No, this is 100% cotton. 100% cotton. 100 grams. You, you, you want to get something with a little. A heavy. I mean, especially because, so keep this up here. Like you, you for, the first thing you did here is you drew it out with your food a pen. Yes. I mean, you knew what you were doing. You had a plan in mind. And so these three gentlemen appeared with your uh, food A. Uh, what did you do next then? I mean, bring the Joker in closer because I just, we saw the older gentleman. I just want to take a look at some of the line details. So just bring it in even closer. Look at the teeth, right? And that the cross uh, hatching, right? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful, right? And so the, how long did this all take you? Let's zero in on the gas mask guy. How long did the drawing take you? Uh, this took a day and a half. Day and a half of drawing, yeah. 
beautiful cross hatching and everything, right? Okay, right. so you got the drawing in, then what? Don't put it down because we want to keep seeing. Okay. Like this is the the we're going to yeah. So what'd you do after you put that all the lines in? What came next? Well, this and and this is the other one. This is of course I I did use for this permanent ink because I knew I wanted to get my lines in first. Yeah. And then when it dried, I just went in with the watercolor. I mean, what a lot of us talk about in the continuous line, because we're playing with watercolor and inks and stuff like that, is the not losing our lines because we work so hard on it. And look at your amazing lines, right? Like, so the whole trick at this point is you can't go too heavy because you want to keep those lines, right? Yes. My lines, I want to, I want this guy, I want to show, but once you go in with the watercolor, you can go back in and put in some more lines. Oh, give the yeah, that's the character. That's what I did with this guy. The, the older guy on yeah. the left? Oh, so you, you put some color in and then you went back in with your cross hatching. So this is, uh, yeah, isn't that? Because it gives it such depth, right? So you put in your watercolor and then you go over, not everywhere, just to make some places really pop, right? Okay. More fountain pen. But you have a good command of your watercolor because you're not going super saturated, which that's sometimes what happens. You go, I mean, I do that all the time. I go so saturated, I lose my ink. So you're really taking care to keep it, keep it well diluted, not diluted fully, but just so it's you can still it's yeah. transparent right yeah you can you can and you and you can what for example with this guy has a little blue here yeah. and you want to give a little touch of blue for example on here also so and you want to keep it wet so you can mix in those colors right so you're talking about like don't like don't do everything all just one color, right? Like it's really important to just kind of mix it up and just be sort of like creative with it, right? Look at this guy's coat. You have blue, you have ochre, yeah. you have several colors, but they, they blend it in because it was a wet surface. Yeah, look at the cross set, like how you got the the tweed or whatever it is, yeah. right? Isn't that <laughs> so? Did those lines come after the watercolor was dry? Then on the the coat, the tweed coat, like for example, did you put yeah. those lines in at the very end, right? And so, wait, don't put that away because then after yeah. you got the gentleman painted, then you put in the background, right? Yes, which is acrylic. So and that's a acrylic paint. Did you mix it with anything or is it just, I mean, is it just watered down a little bit, a couple layers? What'd you do with that? That's one of my secrets. Oh, that okay, I'm I understand. With you. No, no, no. One can of the can you I tell know, us you're gonna have to kill us all, right? Yes, how many people are here? Um, <laughs> look. Millions. <laughs> this, is, this is red, but you, you're gonna notice some dark stains there. It's so amazing. And so where are you painting this that you're able to paint it right up to the edge without? Well, uh, oh God, just, I, I, there's paint everywhere here. But oh. these stains, these dark stains you see here, uh -huh. just, when, you, when you finish with the acrylic, if you splash it with ochre ink. Oh my God. It, it just gives While you, it's still... Uh, Pretty wet, or do you let it dry a little bit? Oh no, no, you you let the the, the acrylic paint dry, yeah. and then you splash it with ochre ink. Interesting. So that gives it sort of that aged look as well, or something, right? Like there's something going on in shadowy. The yeah. Yeah. So it's not just a flat color, right? So you really, I don't want to yeah. say perfected, because I know you still play with all this, and you're like every painting and drawing you do is different. The, from the one before, right? So you're really in this place of just like truly exploration experiment with your colors. And so you've got your like your watercolor paints, you've got your acrylic paints, and then you have your fountain pens and all its inks, right? And the different brushes. Now, when we did that water um, uh, tools and techniques of- um, Yeah. When we did our workshop, I know it was like you had a whole table full of tools, right? And so 
we we would like to do another workshop and we're working on that alejandro yep. just has some uh calendar issues to settle but we're hoping like in the fall or something like that in san miguel to have a workshop which will be the next or it'll be a continuation because that was before COVID. so we'll just yes. basically it'll be illustrative tools of mixed media right and not yeah. that people are going to be able to do what you just did but just to show the layering and the the complexity that you can and the range of things you can do I yeah mean, this this is just um this is a don quixote and that, that's why you say it's it's a it's uh it's a, uh for what did you call it it a pandemic art yeah this, pandemic art. this is a quote from don quixote and you know, he's, he's looking at this is a, a sepia ink and it says for for free message and honor you you must and you should venture into life and and i just had to get it in paper and and you know he he's yeah. kind of, he's got the the look and don quixote has been in a recurring oh yeah yeah look at that isn't that beautiful and this is you know, red fountain pen ink red fountain pen ink yeah bring those eyes closer look at the eyebrows isn't that amazing i love that what kind of paper is that alejandro this is this look is also panel, but it's it's uh it's a little what did you say i didn't hear what, what, it's what also is it fabriano but oh, it is. it's a little so lighter uh and it's 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 uh the color they call something this color i, I don't remember but i thought it would go well with red uh and and so i did this is all red fountain fountain pen ink, and then put some water on it, and that's how I got this. Is that done? No, not not yet. I'm not just, yet. Yeah, I'm because the thing happy. about what you do is you layer it up, right? And that's nice that you give it a little time, right? So it's not. I mean, in my format, everything's kind of a quick. You know, in fifteen minutes, we're done, right? Um, yeah. So it's nice to with the mixed media, the layering of drawing, inks, uh, watercolors, acrylics. Um, it's nice to have that time in between, right? So you can sort of see how it's developing, right? And yes. you know, the thing about the pandemic art, what I was trying to think like, well, what does that mean, right? And I, th I just feel like a lot of your creatures or characters, your people, they're like at the end of their lives, right? There's a lot of older people and it's a, it's a, a, a t like a reminder to sort of reflect on the life you're living or have yeah. and like, what do you want to do with it, right? Like, I think that's pandemic because didn't the pandemic make us all think like, oh my God, what am I going to do now, right? Or what yeah. do I have yet to do that I got to get? I mean, maybe I should just speak for myself. That's what it did for me. It just helped me get really clear, right? So when I see your work, I'm like, yeah, that's like, it just makes me reflect and just want to do the things <laughs> that I want to do. Because it's thoughtful. It's very thoughtful illustrations and people, right? It's like this stuff you you yeah. posted. Uh, you yeah. know, it, this is this is the church that I went to with Doug. And, and I said, I want to put it on a guy's head. Oh, that's uh, a church door. <laughs> that's a church. That's a, ch a little church here in San Miguel. Yeah. Uh, and you know from that i just thought there's there's more there's also this is also a church on top of this guy's head um, yeah look at that <laughs> it's so interesting so you know and these guys are looking out the window those niches of of the church um is that francisco toledo uh it could be it could, yeah. could be francisco toledo but i i i we went to see the church and i said i'm not interested in the church but I'm interested in this frame for my Can you face. bring this a little bit closer so we can see that? Yeah, because look at the, um, you know, it's not a lot of lines, but they're super powerful, right? They're super powerful. And, yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, it's got such yeah. a mysterious feel to it. So and we're kind of wrapping things continuous up. Continuous line in this, you know. Say that again? You can't get more continuous line than this. Yeah, look at that. Is there, um, you know, we we talk about like where we start. Do you have a particular place that you kind of start? Like I kind of start on top of the ears and go over, or is it? I I start with the left eye, well, the right eye, and then I I jump to the left eye, and then I go to the nose, and then I go to the. That's everything. right. You did do that in your little demo. That's how you went eye to the nose, and then around. Right. So. 
Um, we may try that in uh, in our continuous line fundamentals tomorrow. We're gonna like try to mimic your style a little bit because that's what we do. We practice by mimicking other styles, learning from each other, trying what other people have tried, and just in in the in the spirit of exploration, right? Experimenting with our styles and the continuous line because it really is all about sort of pushing through your fears and trying new things and and and. The level that you're at of like trying things and experimenting, it gives it such depth and such, you know, like such depth, right? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And and if if people want to ask more stuff about, you know, well, well how do I move up to a, a little nicer pen? Uh, Bill is Bill is listening. So Bill, I recommend this, for example, um Twispy. Uh, and, and oh yeah, this is the one I want to get. So tell me, where'd you get this? The Twisby. Also on Amazon, you can get it. But this is this is like a, it's I I, I don't, I don't know if it's it's not Chinese. I think it's Taiwanese, uh, and it's it holds a lot of ink, but but the the nib is just wonderful on a fine nib for this. Yeah, so if you carry a lot of ink, uh, and and a good pen. This is this will probably run you. Forty, fifty dollars, but it's it's uh, worth. Hey, it's, it's not as much as the Lamy. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just because I've heard so many great things about that. So, um, uh, the, we've covered a number of pens here. People are saying thank you, Linda Houston, Elaine Bowie, Tasha, uh, Lois. Hello, Lois. Um, uh, Cindy Arellano, she's up there in Coila. As is the uh, Melissa. Jabby, <laughs> Julie Madden. Thank you so much. Eileen Marie Nebel Hennigan. Um, hello, everyone. Lisa, thank you all for being here today. I'm going to be posting this video in the Continuous Line group once I get it to YouTube, as well as the list. See, you gave me that your list of pens, but now I'm going to have a few more questions for you just so I am able to post a, a good list of what you just shared with us. So yes. people are like, well, wait a minute, where do I get this, right? So we're, I'll make sure I have a complete list of everything we just talked about. Uh, links to follow you if people aren't following you already and links to follow me because you better be following me. <laughs> I'm, I'm following you. You're I'm following. Following you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you everyone for being here today, Alejandro. Uh, really great to check in with you today. Even just uh, getting the tech set up yesterday, nice to just hear about what's happening and all the good things that are happening with you being in the galleries and all that. So bravo, my friend, on all your hard work. It's paying off. And I hope to see you in San Miguel in the fall or whenever. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm excited about a workshop because I really want to dive back in. And I mean, I mean yeah, because you in the workshop setting, you're just like, ah, and you get everyone all excited about it. And say, the Zoom is, you know, the Zoom, right? Like, the Zoom, thank you. <laughs> Zoom is good, but it just limits us as far as the human connection, right? So we'll, I'll look forward to... Well, us finding a date that works where we can do this again and I'll come out to San Miguel and we'll have a, a full day workshop so thank you my okay. friend um, and uh, thanks for all the good information thanks everyone for being here and we'll see you next time on the continuous line stories <laughs> okay bye <laughs>